edge of real and cyberspace, there's one place you can go, and you've found it. Welcome to the Nightwise.com podcast, season 16, episode 3. We don't need no stinking transmitters. This week, Nightwise is out for another early morning walk among the birds and the deer to take us back to a simpler time, when podcasting was something you did because it was fun, not just a side hustle. Without further ado, I'm going to turn this straight over to Nightwise, wandering about the Belgian countryside. Hey there, guys and girls. Good morning, and welcome back to the Nightwise.com podcast. The birds are singing, the sun is rising, it's 6.30 in the morning, and I walk the fields behind my house uh, with a headset, uh, earphones, and an iPad Pro on my arm because I want to do a show and I need my show notes. <laughs> Nerdy as hell, but hey. Um, and today I come to you with a very inspired topic. Yesterday I was thinking about uh, the new Apple event where they announced the new uh, M1 iMac and what have you, but there was this little, tiny, tiny sliver of news that Apple also is going to make a revamped podcasting app that allows paid podcasts which is nice for podcasters so they can make a buck and which is even nicer for Apple so they can take a cut. But it got me thinking about how podcasting is becoming this very, very serious blip on the radar. With my own company, I am getting requests from uh, other companies because our company helps uh, other companies with digital communications, that being live streams, uh, social media communication, but also... Uh, we got the first request of, hey, <laughs> we want to do a podcast. Can you help us? And this made me realize that, you know, podcasting is becoming this big thing. And for me, it's funny because I've been around for ages uh, on the podcasting scene. And it also got me thinking about how much fun it's going to be helping those those companies do their thing. Think of their concept. Um, and... Then it hit me. I went like, you know, I'm podcasting. I have a lot of fun podcasting. I've always had a lot of fun podcasting. Why don't I talk about that? You know, but this is not going to be, uh, you know, stare at your belly button, pat yourself on the back, uh, podcasting about podcasting show. No, 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 no. This is going to be a show where I am going to tell you why you should get into podcasting. I remember the start of podcasting. It was 2005 for me, and I just got my first consultancy gig, and I got a company car. But in order for me to enjoy those things, I had to do a long commute to the new office, which was in Bis, which was about uh, an hour and 15 minutes away. No, no, what do you do when you drive in your car for almost three hours a day? Well, um, at first you start listening to the radio. That drives you crazy. Then you uh, dig up your CD collection and you play some CDs. And after, you know, a couple of tracks, that starts to bore you. And suddenly I found myself, well, at a lack of entertainment. During my lunch hour, because I didn't know a lot of people there yet, I was just, you know, fiddling around with the computer that they gave me, which was a really buttoned-down version of, of Windows. And um, the only thing on there was uh, the Windows Media Player. And I went like, wow, that's an exciting piece of tech. But it did have some functionalities, because you could listen to streams. And I went like, okay, uh, Belgian radio is uh, retarded. Let's try international radio. And I looked for some streams, and suddenly I came across the Web Talk Guys. And the Web Talk Guys was a talk show about, uh, with, with a man and a woman who talked about um, technology and the Internet. And, you know, it was technology, and it was something to listen to, so I was, I was very curious. I started listening, and they talked about stuff and they also talked about a lot about Boston Legal and and William Shatner which was like okay and then they had a guest and that guest was Adam Curry and I kind of you know my interest peaked and I went like wait a minute Adam Curry I know that name I have uh, two older brothers 12 and 15 years older than me and they were like into the whole Radio Veronica 
uh, Top Hop and, and, and God knows what scene that Ray, that Adam Curry used to do back in the day. Because, you know, Adam Curry is a Dutch guy who was a radio DJ and who was also a, a what do you call it, video DJ? Uh, you know, you know, a video presenter of a popular music show and stuff. So he was kind of known. And I went like, hey, what the hell is Adam Curry doing on one some technology radio? And he ta started talking about podcasting, where you would record audio, and that audio would be automatically sent out to your listeners who could listen to it in their own leisure, in their own time. And I was like, whoa, this is interesting. And as I started listening, I became more and more intrigued. And I checked out Adam Curry's first show, The Daily Source Code, which was, you know, about where podcasters and developers party together. That was his, his tagline. And it was very interesting to listen to. Now, the guy has an ego that probably needs its own zip code, but that's okay. Because he did inspire me a little, because it ticked a lot of boxes with me. Ever since I quit being a DJ. I used to be a, a DJ uh, for about eight years. We had our own little company uh, with a friend of mine and we used to play gigs and parties and stuff. Uh, and it was a lot of fun. But I had just just recently, a couple of years ago, decided to, to quit. You know, uh, the, it was we, we did all the things we needed to do and uh, it was time. But I missed the stage enormously. So I got into a local, into DJing at a local radio station, and um, I hated it. <laughs> it was so incredibly bland, you know. I came to that radio station, and I went like, "Hey, um, I want to do a show on this, and I, I would like to do a show on synthesizer music." And um, I have this great idea that um, I could talk about, you know, the internet and technology, and it was really, really weird. Now, excuse me as I come face to face with a deer, <laughs> which is walking around the fields. Okay, it's gone now. It's a little baby deer. It was just looking at me. Sorry about that. But, you know, I came to that radio station and I went like, um, yeah, um, let's, 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 technology and, and maybe we can do something about that and that. And they went like, no, 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 no. You have to play, uh, three hits every hour and three hits, three numbers from the 70s and you have to run the ads and stuff. And I found myself very frustrating uh, doing those kind of pre-cut radio shows. And here was Adam Curry in his podcast saying that basically you can run your own radio station, do whatever you want and broadcast to the community. And I started not only uh, listening to a lot of podcasts, But I also started doing my own podcast. And I can, let me see here, 16 years later, excuse me, but this is amazing. There's, a, there's literally a deer on the bank right next to me and it's, it's just looking at me and I'm, I'm on the little road underneath it. Uh, it's a little baby deer in the forest here. Uh, we don't get them a lot. Um, but after... 16 years of listening to podcasts and doing podcasts, I can quite sufficiently say that podcasting has changed my life. Oh boy, <laughs> three deers, two, two big ones and a baby deer just crossing the road right ahead of me. Oh my God, <laughs> I'm really sorry. They're messing up my podcast and my punchline because what I wanted to say is indeed, Podcasting has changed my life, and it will probably be able to change yours as well. And that's why I think that you should get into podcasting. And I'll tell you why you have to do it. The deers have gone back to the forest. They have stopped distracting me, and I have finally the time and the concentration to tell you a very important thing. Why you should get into podcasting because quite frankly you should the first thing is you can share your passion you know that niche hobby that you have that you are really into that geeky nerdy very specific kind of hobby that you love and you can talk about it for hours but there's nobody who understands what you're talking about that kind of thing 
you all might have it, a passion for technology or maybe crochet or I don't know what. It, the topic can be as bizarre as it can be, but maybe you want to talk about it and share that passion. Sharing that passion is very, very rewarding. And it's one of the big reasons to get into podcasting because you can literally talk about the things you love. And as you talk about the things you love, you can bring people into the fold. You can find those people out there that might also be interested in what you are passionate about or that know nothing about what you're passionate about, but because they're listening to you, sorry, train coming by, because they're listening to you, they they get to know the topic and they get to be interested and suddenly they become passionate about the things that you are passionate about. You bring people into the fold. And that's a very rewarding thing to do because then not only can you talk about what you're passionate about, but you can also... um, Talk to them why you're passionate about it and how, why they should be passionate about it. And you can impart your knowledge and become this well product of meritization. Because meritization is where you, based on your experience and expertise, have the knowledge and the reputation to be a body of knowledge about a certain thing and this is a circular thing you talk about something uh, people see you as the go-to guy the guru about this and as you do that they come with questions and you research those questions and you push yourself further to learn more and then you become more of an expert and here we go and here we go And suddenly you build up this body of knowledge and experience that might come in handy later on in your life or in your career as you build your skill set and your expertise. The second thing, which is also a reason why you should get into podcasting, is to connect. I talked about that you have a passion and there might be others out there that share that passion connect with them. Use your podcast to find a community, to find like-minded spirits, and not only talk to them, broadcast to them, but interact with them and connect with them. Because this gives you not only the ability to make friends and to build up relationships, but also to uh, form a community, to let them find each other. And as I am talking to the Nightwise.com listeners and the Nightwise.com community, I have to say this is, for me, has been one of the most rewarding things I've ever did. I've met people from all over the world that I would have never met before if it were not for my podcast. I have... Um, friends all over the globe that I can reach out to and that can reach out to me because of my podcasts. I have connections all over the globe that I can tap into and that can tap into me because of the podcast. And this is great. I mean, it is different than when you're a DJ and you're on stage. When you're on stage, you interact with your audience, but it's on a different level. Here, it's not as much as about being a broadcaster and pushing out your content as to being part of a community and inspiring them with your ideas and your visions and vice versa. Because what even what's even nicer than building a commu- than than building friends on the internet, connecting with people, is having them connect with each other, and that is a beautiful thing to do. Not only will you build a virtual community of friends, or maybe their listeners in in your region around you, maybe you'll build friends a network of friends all over the world, but you will also be able to have them connect with each other and talk about the passion that you all share. And then you're literally bringing people together, which is, for me, one of the most satisfying things to do. 
One of the other reasons why you want to get into podcasting is because it gives you the ability to learn, to grow. And this might be about the knowledge of the thing you want to talk about, because, you know, you have to do some research and you have to think about things and, and you have to think about new topics and, and stuff like that and research them. So you'll grow in your knowledge about a certain topic. But because you have to explain it to others, well, the best way to understand a certain topic is to explain it to others. You'll be forced, challenged, to not only gather the knowledge, but also structure that knowledge into a way that you can communicate this knowledge in an entertaining way to your community. And this is a skill. This is a skill that is incredibly important in your life because it's a basic skill of communication. For my personal experiences, podcasting helped me in analyzing, deducting, structuring, and explaining complex technical concepts to people who might not know as much about the topic than I do. It has forced me back from being a geek speaker who is, you know, all over the place with these topics and talks in tech terms and nobody understands, but instead I had to really step back, take a look at the audience that was listening and think about, you know, what do they know about it? How do I, what do, what do I want to impart on them? And how do I do that? And this is a skill for me that has laid the basis of my career as a public speaker. It will also help you grow in speaking in front of an audience. You're in front of a microphone, okay, it's different, you don't see people, but you are managing the skills. A lot of people have fear of public speaking. They hate to get up in front of a crowd or they have to present something from work in a meeting and oh my God, it terrifies them and they cling to their slides and you know, but with podcasting, you will have kind of a training ground your own personal community that allows you to do that. And I can very confidently tell you that it really makes a difference if you've had some experience in your podcast structuring and, and explaining data because it's going to help you in communicating with others in real life in a big way. One of the other things that you'll also learn is how to be an entrepreneur because basically you will have a podcast and said podcast needs to get out there. So you're going to have to think about, you know, how do I market this? First of all, how do I explain to people what I'm going to talk about? How am I, how am I going to tell them why they should listen and what's going to be the end result? This marketing exercise is a fantastic exercise, is a fantastic training ground, once again, for your later endeavors. And I, you might say, well, Nightwise, I'm never going to be an entrepreneur. That's good. That's fine. That's okay. But if, for, for example, at work, you have an idea you want to pitch, because you've had the experience in podcasting and marketing your own product, you will be able to pitch that idea in a much more structured, commercial, and confident manner. So again, the podcast is going to, to help you. So you will learn so much and grow so much because of this training ground, this, this, this sandbox that is your podcast. And that's a very important one. Because not only will you deep dive into your knowledge, which is good, it's your expertise, it's your hobby, it's your passion, not only will you become an expert on the matter because your audience looks up to you and actually demands it and will motivate you to research more, you will also be able to become a communicator slash marketeer who explains to people why they should listen. And it will also grow one very important skill that you have, which is empathy. It will give you the ability to really think about your audience. And this is a skill that I cannot stress uh, the most. 
learning to understand what your audience wants. And your audience might be your podcasting audience, but might also be the people around you in your life, at your job, maybe your customers in your own company. You learn to listen through talking. What would they want to learn about? You can still, you know, do your own thing, have your own podcast, have your own thing. That's, there's nothing wrong with that. But you will also learn to understand what they want to talk about, what they want to hear. And anticipating what your market wants is very important if you ever want to sell something. And this might be a product or maybe just an idea at work. But it will also help you when you're, you know, out and about and when you're talking to other people. You know, what might they want to hear? How can I structure it for them? And what's going to be their end result? How can I convince them? All in all, podcasting, and I talk from a personal experience, has been this amazing sandbox for me. This amazing place where I could be whoever I wanted to be. I could talk about whatever I wanted to talk about. I could have all of my crazy ideas and just go like, I can do this in the podcast. Regarding the fact that I still, you know, try to stay true to my mission, what I, what I want to I, I talk about, let technology work for you and say the other way around. But also about what my community wanted to hear, but especially about what I wanted to do. You know, in the beginning, I've done anything, I've done everything, you know, podcasting, it's, it's amazing. You know, I want to you know, sing part of my own title tune. Yep, did that in season one. Um, want to do a sound scene tour of an underground bass. Did that. Uh, want to see if I can compose my own jingles. Yes, I can. See if I can do an interview. Okay, boom, let's do something internationally. Okay, let's try that. Let's see if we can do a radio show, an entire afternoon of broadcasting and interviewing and see if I can get it to work technically and have a good time. Well, why not? Use the podcast. And here it comes. Because all of these things that I've ticked upon that I've had the experience of doing in my podcast, I've gathered skills. And you know what I say about knowledge and experience. It, knowledge plus experience is meritization. It gives you a reputation. It makes you an expert. Having the ability to have that amazing playground to not only talk about what you love, but also connect and interact with the community, learn from them, and tap on all of these both soft skills and technical skills, it gives you a very unique opportunity to grow as a person. And from personal experience, I can guarantee you that because of that, because of learning things through podcasts and experiencing things by podcasting, podcasting has quite frankly, changed the course of my life. I have my own company and I've had personal, uh, professional experiences working for, for, for a boss or working for a client where they say, you know, have you, do you have some experience with this? And I was like, yeah, did this, you know, when I was podcasting, blah, 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 blah. Hey, how come you're so good at public speaking? Well, podcasting, blah, 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 blah. Oh my God, you're doing a radio voice voiceover. Where did you experience? Oh, podcasting, blah, 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 blah. Where I had, if I had stuck to really, you know, classic radio or somebody was going to tell me what to say and what songs to play and, and what to do and what to talk about, I would have never had this experience. I'm taking, I was taking my own channel and my own destiny into my own hands and podcasting has literally changed my life and maybe it will do the same for you. Before we close off, though, I want to talk about a couple of misconceptions that are still out there when people are looking at a start of a podcasting career. And let's get those misconceptions out of the way.
there are a couple of misconceptions that are really out there and that still drive people away from podcasting when they want to start. And one of them is this fixation with numbers. And this is something that is not unique to podcasting. It's also out there on social media where people seem to be fixated on the number of followers that they have. I have so many followers on Instagram. I have so many followers on Facebook. I have so many followers on YouTube. Millions of followers on YouTube. And I, in the beginning, it used to be like that as well. I mean, I, I remember talking to uh, one of the co-hosts that I worked with uh, in this very nerdy podcast uh, together with, with, uh, with three amazing guys. And, and one of them is smiling right now because he has the headphone on and is editing the show. Uh, but there was another British guy in that podcast. And, and this kid was fixated about the numbers. You know, we needed more numbers, more numbers, more downloads, more downloads. And, and, and we needed to, to, to be more popular. And I remember talking to him one day. And I said, um, you know, I got into podcasting because I wanted to do my own thing. And you seem to be looking for the general common denominator to make something that is as mediocre as possible in order to please an audience that is as big as possible. And that was something that struck me as weird. And I remember very fondly talking to him and saying, uh, you know what? Stop chasing the ball and start being the ball. Start setting the tone. And it might be uphill in the beginning when you choose to do your own thing, but it will help you in being happy and f building a community of listeners that has quality instead of just quantity. A friend of the show, Gerard, uh, told me once, he said, like, you're better off with a smaller community of a thousand people that you interact with and that really listen and are loyal than having a community of 10,000 or 100,000 people that are all strangers. And that is something that is very, very true. Because um, you have to think about other things than just becoming popular. Podcasting is a niche thing and having a loyal niche community that interacts with you and with, you, with each other is much more important than just having big popular numbers and making mediocre content because you want to please an audience that's, that's as big as possible. It doesn't have to be like radio. And I take back the days to I take back to the days with Adam Curry when he started podcasting because he was sick of commercial radio and so was I because it was so bland and so cookie cutter and he said like you know what there are no rules we make our own rules and we make our own thing and this is our creative outlet and you know rock and roll in a very geeky way but that's it the second misconception is that sound and gear is everything it has to be perfect now, I do have to say I have had my fair share of investing in gear and materials and uh, headphones and microphones to make it sound good. And I can quite frankly say that um, thanks to the magic of Katie Murray, this sounds very amazing. This is not really part of me, but this is because of uh, the, the post work that he does. But it's never more important than the quality of your content. The Nightwise.com show has never adhered to the rules that it has to sound like radio, it has to be recorded in a studio, it has to be perfect. Now, I am out here with a headphone on, walking around the fields, probably recording something that is terrible to listen to, but that might be saved by the editing skills of, of uh, Katie Murray. But, you know, we have done podcasting on the bike, in the in the rain. Uh, I've done podcasting walking. I've done pod I've done, done my, own po my first podcast in the car. And that was part of the charm of the show. And because we never chose to adhere to the fact it has to be like radio, it has allowed me to be much more creative and talk to you guys wherever and whenever I want to, like right now. Having good content and consistently putting it out there 
Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know what you're going to say. But having good content and consistently putting it out, where, out there is much more important. Just make a show already. Stop think, tinkering around with gear. Stop ordering um, the next microphone. Stop spending hours listening to a review of a certain YouTuber talking about a certain piece of gear. Uh, just, just make a show. Just make a show. And if the first show isn't perfect, then the second one will be better. And it's your experience in producing uh, content and your consistency and quality of content that will be of much more value to your audience than just having something that sounds amazing. So never ever let gear or technology distract you from your creativity. Just make a show. So one of the last things that I want to talk about is that people say, well, I'm going to be the star of my show. And over the last couple of years, I've done a lot of work as um, a trainer and a public speaker. And I've had the chance to talk to people and talk in front of groups and, and do things. And I can say this um, very honestly, I am somebody who needs a stage in his life to be happy. I love being well, not this well, being the center of attention, maybe. Yeah, I love to um, entertain people and, uh, and touch people's minds and inspire people. And I love to be the one that when he starts talking, a crowd hushes. And I know in my head, I have them. And that is a very, very powerful experience that you are able to grab the attention of of a listener and to take them with you but there is the biggest flaw because then it comes it comes back to that it's all about you and if you want to surpass that if you want to grow past that you have to take one more step and take your ego Take the fact that you love the fact that people listen to you. Enjoy the fact that you have their attention. Might be on stage or they might have just downloaded your show. And then go one step further. Because this is where all the podcast, all the YouTubers and the influencers fail. They get all of this attention from their community. And they think, it's all about me. And there is where, you, where they fail because it's all about them. Understand that the only reason that people download your show is not only to listen to you, but to learn something from you. And if you connect with that feeling, you know, I have your attention. Now, let me, I, I, I'm humbled by the fact that I'm getting your attention. I'm humbled by the fact that you want to listen to me. So I'm not going to go on an ego trip here. No, I'm going to think about how can I impart this message, this passion that I want to share in the most effective way to you. Because it's all about your community it's all about your listeners and how you can make them feel what 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 you think is important for them make them learn about what is important for them and I close out my show with that point exactly I didn't start off this show that's with, with saying you know I'm into podcasting I'm going to impart my knowledge here you know I've, I've got 16 years of experience in podcasting blah 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 and I'm going to talk about you know all the awesome things that I did and everybody's going to listen to me oh, it's going to be great no I started this show because I woke up this morning and I said I want to inspire people to have the same passion about podcasting that I have, but also to have the same abilities, the same opportunities, to experience the same opportunities that podcasting can give you that I experienced. Podcasting changed my life. And I am trying to convince you that if you embrace it, it will also change yours. 
it doesn't have to be perfect about from from day one it's not about the destination it's about the journey it's not about you it's about the audience they're all very paradoxical paradoxic messages but they ring true and the only thing and the only way that you can experience them is by grabbing a recording device this might be your smartphone this might be a microphone this might be I don't know the microphone of your laptop for all I care sitting down thinking about the audience thinking about what they need to hear and to start your own podcast and tell them good luck and that's all the time we have this week on the nightwise.com podcast season 16 episode 3 we don't need no stinking transmitters we all have stories, knowledge, and interest to share. Much like the early days of blogging, the early days of podcasting were a treasure trove of unique individuals, and each with their own unique energy and personality. If you think you have something to share, something you want to talk about, or something that someone else in the community might want to listen to, why don't you record a podcast yourself? And if you're looking for an audience, you can share that with the Nightwise.com community. The music track for the show this week is from Blue Dot Sessions, their album Ray Gun, and the track is called Take a Tiny Train. You'll find a link to that and a bunch of the things Nightwise covered in the show today over in the show notes at nightwise.com. If you've got feedback for us, hit us up on the email address, it's feedback at nightwise.com, or come over and join the growing community of wise guys and wise girls over on the Discord. The link for that is up on the website at nightwise.com. Until next time, this is producer KD Ray reminding you to let the technology work for you instead of the other way around. Thanks for listening. You have been listening to the Nightwise.com podcast, the show with hacks, tips, and tweaks for cross platform geeks. Send your feedback, questions, or start your own personal flame war by contacting us directly on feedback at Nightwise.com. You can support the show by sharing it with your friends or writing us a nice iTunes review at www.nightwise.com forward slash iTunes. If you have some credits to spend, click the PayPal button on the nightwise.com website to help us pay the bills. Just remember, there is real life outside cyberspace. But it's not all that important.